Hello, makeup friends. We're back with another What I Wore to the Office video. And this week the theme is new palettes that I've bought. I have not bought a lot of makeup so far this year, but recently I've been doing, I guess we can call it a little bit of stress shopping. But even at that, I've still been really considering what it is that I'm purchasing. And so the palettes that you'll see here are all ones that I have hemmed and hawed about for quite some time and then finally decided to pull the trigger. So up first, as you saw, is the Lavender one, the newest palette from Lawless. I had not tried Lawless before uh, and I have done a video where I did arm swatches and eye swatches of this palette as well as the palette that we'll see for day two. And... I'm not super impressed with this one. I'll just uh, bury the lead there. And it, you know, it's workable, it is. And some of these shades are really pretty, like this shade that I'm applying to my eyes here right now is just such a pretty color and like perfect for spring and summer. But overall, it's just a very frustrating palette to work with. So I can't really recommend it. And in fact, as much as I don't actually like enjoy returning makeup, I did return this one because I knew that I wasn't going to wear it again. So if you are new to this series, hello and welcome. Every week I film myself as I do my makeup getting ready for work and then I put it all together into a video, do a little voiceover and share it with you guys. And my hope with this is just to show some inspiration this week obviously is all newer palettes, but I do try to go through my collection and use older palettes as well. And even if you don't have that exact palette, you probably have similar shades in other ones. So really I'm just hoping to give some inspiration for makeup to wear to work. The office setting that I work in is a law firm. I do own the law firm, so I'm not really constrained by what my employer thinks about my makeup, but I do try to Play to what I have going on on the day. So if I'm in court or if I'm meeting with a lot of people in person or on Zoom, I tend to tone it down a bit. But as I was doing the makeup this day, this was for Monday, and I had quite a few phone calls on the schedule, but nothing in person. So I wasn't too concerned about wearing a slightly more colorful look, although this is something that I would wear even if I was meeting a lot of people, if I'm being perfectly honest about it. So I have been sharing with you my struggles with technology and <laughs> thankfully this week was actually pretty humdrum in the technology side of things. We didn't have any major crises for me to uh, figure out, although my editing software for my YouTube channel stuff, that crapped the bed. So I had some frustrations at home. I am now using a new editing software program. I haven't changed the software program that I've used since I started my channel back in, God, did I start this in 2017, 18, 17? I can't remember. 17, I think. Um, so I've finally made the jump to a different one. And thankfully, it's pretty intuitive and the layout is pretty similar to the old one. But this one's functional, so that is good. It's not without its frustrations, and certainly there is a learning curve to it, but... I think the crisis has passed, so very happy about that. Um, yep, I the curiosity got the better of me, so I picked up the Telescopic Lift Mascara. You know the one from Mascara Gate from like a month or so ago. And I have to say, I actually really like this mascara. And I like it enough that like, it just makes me question even harder why somebody would lie about the results. Like, I just don't get why you would feel that you had to lie about it because it's a very good mascara just on its own. I will say, and I'll show you the, the close up here in just a second. It certainly does lift my lashes and does add some length. I don't think it adds a ton of volume. It's not quite to the degree of my beloved Bite Beauty mascara, but it's a really good option. Now we're going to go in with the lips. This is the lip plumping lip gloss again from Lawless. This is in the shade Violet Bloom. This shade in particular is a limited edition color, although the product itself, there's a bunch of other colors and those are not limited edition. It does have a little bit of a cooling sensation, but nothing super tingly, nothing painful. 
I I don't like any cooling sensation, so I've also returned this one. But I think for the majority of people who aren't as picky or fussy as I am, it's going to be totally fine. And now we are on to Tuesday, and we're using the newest palette from Rare Beauty. This is the Give Yourself Grace palette. And I have also done a video with eye swatches on this. That is the video that I posted before this video. And so on my agenda for this day, I had a four-way settlement meeting via Zoom in the morning and then a couple telephone calls on the agenda for later in the afternoon. And I have to say, four-way meetings, they're they're an interesting little beast because they can be very productive. They can also be very emotional. And so a lot of times I find that the success of them really does rely on the council involved. And I was very, very grateful that this day, the lawyer representing the other party is excellent. She and I are friends outside of the world of work. And it just, it just takes that much more stress out of the event. And it's great when you have two lawyers who are looking to create solutions rather than create problems. So I was very grateful and I knew that it was going to be like that going into the meeting. So sitting down doing my makeup here in the morning, I wasn't stressed out. I didn't have that like gnawing feeling in my stomach that this was just going to be a giant disaster. I knew that the other counsel and I, even if our clients are not in the most cooperative of uh, places, shall we say, I knew that we wouldn't be adding to the issue. And in fact, we did get an interim agreement in place. So I'm very happy about that. It's a good placeholder while we get some more information so that we can start to finalize issues. So it was, uh, you know, there were some tense moments and emotions do tend to run high anytime you're in the same room, even if it's a virtual space. But it was a productive uh, use of time. And I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. So keeping that in mind, because I knew I was doing this settlement meeting, I didn't really want to go over the top with the makeup. Um, So even though I really like the pressed glitter in this palette, I, I restrained myself, as you will see as we get through the makeup, and just sort of lightly applied it over the lid. But that glitter in the middle there, oh, it's so beautiful. It's It sounds strange to say that I really like a pressed glitter because most pressed glitters leave you wanting more, but this one is really good. It's it it's really good, you'll see. Um, and then again, wearing this all day to the office, I didn't have any issues with fading. The um, glitter that I did apply stayed all day, even though I didn't use a glitter glue. I didn't mention that with respect to the lavender palette from Lawless on the Monday, That one, the shimmers did hold up by the end of the day, but the mattes had all sort of morphed together and it had just become a muddy sort of bruise looking thing on my face. And so again, I just, I cannot recommend it. Whereas the Rare Beauty palette, I absolutely recommend. If you want my full thoughts, be sure to check out my review video on it, but Suffice it to say that I'm very, very happy with this purchase and I have no buyer's remorse. In fact, I'd be curious to see her come out with some more. Also, that was just a little spoiler there for an upcoming Project Pan update. I'm almost done Flexitarian. It is so close to the end. It's so exciting. And at the same time, I love it. So I am going to kind of miss it. I would consider repurchasing it, but not right away. I have so many highlighters that have been sort of left neglected because I've been panning Flexitarian since January of 2022, or maybe February of 2022, because I started off with a Stila highlighter and then gave up on that one and switched to Flexitarian. The lipstick here is in the shade Worthy, also from Rare Beauty, and I really like these lipsticks as well, so... There was the completed look for Tuesday. That glitter is so gorgeous. I highly recommend this palette. So now we are moving on to day three. And this was just a half day in the office for me. So I had phone calls in the morning. And then I was going to get my hair done in the afternoon. And the palette that I'm using here is from Hard Candy. This one is in the shade Dope. 
And I have not tried hard candy in a hot minute. I can't remember the last time I used any of their products, but I had noticed that they had really beefed up the display at my local Walmart and I hadn't seen these palettes or even seen anybody talking about them and curiosity got the better of me. So they had, I want to say about six or seven different shade selections to choose from and I really really hemmed and hawed over which one I was going to pick up, but there's just something so pretty about these blues. So I grabbed this one and spoiler, I liked it so much that I then went back and picked up two more. They won't be shown in this video, but I'm sure I will show them at some point coming up. These were only $4.98 Canadian. So I imagine in the United States, these are probably in the $3 range, $3.50, something like that. So very easy to overlook, especially if you've become a little bit of a cosmetic snob, as I will admit that I have. Uh, but, I mean, quality is quality, right? And whether you're paying $3 for a palette or you're paying $93 for a palette, it all comes down to how it performs. And these little guys pack a punch. You will see that my my butt figuratively falls off when I apply the shimmer shadow, which will be coming up very soon. And it was the shimmer shadow and as well the longevity of these palettes, or at least this palette on my eyes this day, that got me to go back to Walmart to pick up more because I'm just very impressed with it. And for like $5, you cannot go wrong. So here we are, butt falls off right about there. There it is. Yep, that fell off. <laughs> and that shimmer shadow lasted with that intensity all day. All day. It's beautiful. So the other shades that I picked up, I picked up like a, a green palette and then I picked up sort of a warm neutral palette. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but they have quite a variety to choose from some far more neutral, there's some pink ones, like they're really nicely curated little quads. And uh, like I said, highly, highly recommend them. Didn't have any issues with the mattes either. So we'll see soon that I did go and get my hair done that day. And I have been going to my same stylist for years now. And I just, I love just chatting with him. He is fantastic. We just sit there and giggle the entire way through, but nobody understands my hair the way my stylist does. So I'm so grateful that I found him. For years, I avoided going to the hairdresser. Uh, I've said it before on my channel. I have social anxiety. I am very introverted, despite the fact that there are moments where I'm very outgoing. And so my husband always like finds it funny whenever I say that I'm introverted because of the two of us, I'm the one that can do the small talk. I can talk to the strangers. I can be friendly and outgoing, but it's at a cost, right? It just exhausts me. So finding a hairstylist that I could sit in their chair and talk easily to who didn't stress me out or intimidate me was a bit of a chore. So literally I would make Barry cut my hair and he has absolutely no idea what he's doing. So I just very much relied on a fun bun for like a solid 10 years so I'm very happy to have found the stylist that I have now. And when he changed salons, I followed him. And there's another lady that works with him who does Aspen's hair. And Aspen refuses to go to anybody else but her. And she's just wonderful as well. So there is the fresh hair. No more roots and nice and straight. And I will rock that straight as long as I can. I will get like a solid seven days out of it. I'll wash my body, but not my hair. And by the seventh day, it's all dry shampoo and prayer. And then I have to wash it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, going in with the palette. This one is from e.l.f. And I'll tell you right now, even though it has the exact same price as the one from Hard Candy, go for the Hard Candy. This one, while not bad, the shimmer, like you'll see, I apply the green shimmer all over my lid. By the end of the day, it was just a little strip of shimmer just above my lash line. The rest of it had disappeared. And it just doesn't have the same wow factor or the same same longevity as those hard candy ones. So I would definitely recommend hard candy over the elf. And so on this day, I'm just actually checking my calendar. What did I have going on? This was Thursday. Oh, tons of phone calls. So again, as I said, 
introvert. So I can do these voiceovers and it's not socially draining because it's just me talking in my basement, staring at myself on the computer. That's totally fine. That doesn't exhaust me. The actual interaction with people, that's what drains my battery. So having so many phone calls and the four-way meeting and the hairdresser appointment, having all of that in the first four days of the week is, it's very exhausting for me. And then I just need quiet, alone time to just recharge. It's not even that I'm in like a bad mood or anything. It's just that I'm drained. I guess in the same way that I would be drained physically if I ran a marathon, that's how I feel emotionally. So thankfully, my kids and my husband get it. They (laughs) know that once I go into like the tub, that is for me to just regroup and then an hour later I will be back to being the mummy that they know and love or the wife as the case may be. Um, but I do need some time to regroup and then I usually take one day off a week. So I took Friday off this week and I don't really like taking the Friday um, simply because then I'm just exhausted. <laughs> so I prefer normally to take Wednesdays off, but it just wasn't going to work for this week with what I had on my calendar. So this day, like I said, I had a lot of phone calls, but also a lot of drafting that I got done and a lot of letter writing. It's kind of what my job is, is just a lot of writing. Oh, and here's Aspen. She just popped in to say hello. I had taken her shopping the night before. There's a um, Blue Notes store near us that is closing. The um, like Blue Notes itself isn't closing, but that particular location is. So everything is $15 or less. And it was the first time that she and I have done like mother-daughter clothes shopping in that way. And it was just, it's really cool just to get to see her own personality developing and seeing what her sense of style is, what she likes, what she doesn't, all that kind of thing. So she had so much fun. I had so much fun. We got a ton of stuff for not very much money at all. So she's all set for spring And then she was on like Facebook Messenger with her friend, showing her friend what it was she had got. She put on like a little fashion show for me. And it was just fun. Like she's going to be 11 in May of this year. And while I miss baby Aspen and little toddler Aspen, and there was never a cuter child than two-year-old Aspen, I am really loving 10, 11-year-old Aspen. There are times, don't get me wrong, there are times where that preteen angsty vibe comes out, but few and far between and very short-lived when it happens. But it's just, it's just a next step in the mother-daughter relationship for us. And I just, I, I just love it. We had so much fun hanging out together and I can't wait to do it again with her sometime. I just, I love that kid so much. And I just, I really want to have, as she gets older, that close, almost friendship-like relationship because that's not something that I have with my own mother. And it's always something that I've wanted, but if I can't have it with my own mother, at least I can have it with my daughter. So back to the makeup, finishing up with the big fat lip oil or whatever it's called from NYX. I would go with the Fenty over the NYX, but at any rate... This is my week of makeup from last week. I hope you have a great week coming up. I will see you in my next video. And until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now, guys.